Hey there, this is your girl Shawanda, and you're listening to Refreshing the Soul Podcast, a show where we bring our experiences and God's truth to refresh the heavy and hard places in your soul. From anxiety to unforgiveness, we'll learn how to come to an honest place in our souls and uproot those hidden lies so that you can discover the unique expression God created you to be in this world. Hey, welcome back to Refreshing the Soul podcast. I'm your host, Shawanda Williams. Thank you for joining me for another episode. If it's your first time, welcome to Refreshing the Soul. This podcast is about creating a safe space for you to do the soul work. Maybe there's some healing that you need, um, just some things you want to move forward in. Um, You're dealing with possibly depression, anxiety, um, insecurity, and you're like, I want to be free in from my past mistakes, my past hurts, but I know there's some work that I need to do and you need a safe space to do it in. And that is what refreshing the soul is about. It's about creating a safe space for you to one, feel seen and heard right where you are for you to be honest about your feelings about what you feel, to not feel condemned or guilty for it, or to feel as if you are um, not as close or connected to God because of feelings. God gave us emotions. We just have to discover what um, our emotions are saying about ourselves, what's going on on the inside of, of us. And so that's what that's what we're here for. We're here to support you in growing, support you in your healing journey, support you as you do um, the soul work. Um, So if you're new, you may not know, but every podcast I ask, how is your soul doing? And so I want to ask that of you right now. How is your soul doing? How are you for real? How are you really doing? I know life gets busy. I know life gets hard. And sometimes both can be distracting to what's going on in us. Busy and it being challenging. It can be distracting to um, know what I need, what we need. So I want you to take a moment right now. You can pause this video and come back. But this is your time to check in. Check in with yourself because you matter. What's going on with you, it matters. And even if it's not showing up today in a unhealthy or toxic or distracting way, what we choose to keep covered, what we choose not to deal with or handle, it will eventually handle us. Um, But our soul is something that is in our possession. It's something that we Um, have to steward over. So whatever emotions, whatever's going on, whatever triggers, this is the time to say, you know what, I need to go back and deal with what I felt yesterday. I haven't come to an honest place yet. And I need to be honest with myself. And I need to be honest with God. That when I heard that it, it made me feel a certain type of way. I got a little anxious, I got a little fearful, Um, I got angry, I got irritated, whatever it is, let's go back and just talk about that with ourselves and let's talk about that with God. Let's be honest with him and say, God, (laughs) this is what I'm feeling. I don't know where it's, where it's coming from. I don't know why this, this bothers me. I need your help. Show me, reveal to me what I don't see about myself because I know that you know everything. I know that you know me better than I know myself. Will you, will you show me God what's going on in the inside of me? What does this emotion mean? Like what, why am I angry every time I, and then if you, you may know, you may know why this certain person always, um, um, make you angry is what you, you were probably describing whenever they talk. It could be their voice. It could be, it could be anything. You may know why you may know is linked to whatever. And it's something that, you know, you, you need to deal with and you, you need to process and 
but you haven't created that quiet time, that place of just stillness of really like writing out, okay, let me address this. I really need to get to the root of what this is. And again, we're inviting God into that place in our soul where, okay, we're honest with him. What do I do, God? What, how do I handle this? And God will surely instruct you, however, through his word, through another person, I mean, through various ways, through a knowing, a sense of knowing. Um, you may hear it today, you may hear it tonight, you may hear it tomorrow. You may feel like, okay, <laughs> I need to confess. I need to be honest with this person or I I need to just keep writing this out or believing that what God, who God says that I am and who he says he is. I don't know. God will give you instructions. He will give you, he will give you the way he will show you the way, um, because he is the way he knows the way to healing. Um, and he knows just what your soul needs. Okay. So just want to check in and I don't want you to wait until you get on this podcast to check in, check in with your soul every day. And if you say, hey, I'm busy, I got this and this to do, carve out five minutes before you go to bed, right when you wake up, to just write, write down a prayer letter. God, I felt this. This is what I'm going through. This is how I feel. Give me your strength. Show me your, show me your way. Show me how you want me to handle this and address this. And I trust you that you will answer in Jesus name. Amen. Just like that. And so, um, this month, if you've been rocking along with us, we've been talking about moving forward last week. I kind of felt like I veered off some talking, uh, you know, I just really been on, it's been on me about speaking about being like our human being, like being who we are and being with God. But I still, I feel like that's still tied with moving forward. If we're never in a place of where we can sit still and be with ourselves and, and be with God or just being, and we're constantly doing or feeling like we're having to perform, feeling like we're having to um, do this to be this, then we'll continue to run in this cycle um, and not really moving forward in God's purpose and his plan for us. Um, it's in the being is in the sitting it's in the living um not just the doing but in the living day to day as God's plan unfolds um sometimes we can't hear God's plan because we we're, we're too busy we're too busy moving and we won't sit still enough to just be and in our being that's where we find purpose that's where we find who we are we discover like, this is who he made me to be. This is what I am to be to my community, to my family. Um, so we talked about learning how to be last week. And this week, um, I want to talk about forgiveness and more specifically forgiving yourself. Lately, I've just been hearing so much on forgiveness. And I'm like, Lord, well, I already talked about forgiveness. I have a whole um, series on forgiveness back in, I think, 2022 or 2021. I actually um, ended the series with my, at that time, he was my ex-husband. Now he's my husband, um, but he was my kid. I, I, I don't, I've never referred to him as my ex-husband, um, really as my kid's father. But now we're married, but we talked about our, our road to forgiveness. Um, because during our marriage, um, we were married for 10 years, three kids, during that time, that 10 year marriage, we had encountered so many, um, hurts, pains to each other. And for me, there was, there was, I, I experienced infidelity. Um, it hurt me. Honestly, it traumatized me because I stayed in it for five years plus and, um, staying in it that long and, and I'm telling you, I mean, it wasn't, it was more than once that it happened. Staying it for that long, it changed the way that I saw myself and it changed the way that I saw him and, and the way that I saw other women. And so when I got out of the marriage, um, and I discovered that God was actually real, <laughs> um, 
I began to go on this journey with God and learning who he was and who I am. And immediately it, my relationship with God began with honesty, honesty with where I was at, honesty with God. What do you see? Um, he showed me from day one of my relationship with him that he knew my heart. And one of the things that he challenged me and it did feel like a challenge was for me to forgive, to forgive my husband, but to first forgive myself. I needed to let go. I needed to let go of, I was beating myself up of how much I really trusted and wanted this marriage to work. And when I knew, you know, there are times where I should have, um, there are times where I kept hoping past what I felt like I should have, um, and knowing that I should, I should have been loving myself more. Um, I didn't, I, I held on to my husband. I held on, um, trying to trust him and not trust God, trying to trust him and love him and not love myself. Not that it didn't hurt what he was doing, but I wasn't addressing what it, what it felt like. I addressed, I addressed it when it happened in the moment. And then it was like, okay, how can we move on and make things better so I can feel better? I wasn't taking care of myself. I treated myself, I treated myself badly. And so I'm here, I'm out of the marriage and I'm beating myself up because of it. How could I do that to myself? How could I not love myself? Think of how could I let this go on for 10 years? And one thing I felt from the Lord was that I need to forgive myself. So I looked up the definition of forgiveness for you. And it says, in general, it involves an intentional decision to let go of resentment and anger. And we'll put on the end of that for today, because we're talking about forgiving yourself. This is letting go of resentment and anger toward yourself. Some of you are beating up yourself because of past mistakes, shortcomings, things that you did not give yourself um, maybe the time, the permission to do, and you, you're like, man, I've missed so much time. I missed opportunities. Why did I do that to myself? Why did I not love myself? Right? Why did I not listen to God? How could I slip and say that? How could I, how, I'm, I'm so messed up. I did that. And here we're holding ourselves to our past and we're not giving ourselves permission um, to receive what God wants to give us now. And I wrote, I wrote here, let me just read this. I said, we can hold ourselves to our past mistakes and shortcomings and not give ourselves permission to receive the good that God wants to bless us with because we feel unworthy of it. So sometimes we sabotage, we sabotage good relationships. We sabotage good, good jobs. Uh, we, we may find one small mistake, one thing that we don't like, and it's over. We, we, we don't, we don't want to, we don't want to stay in it. It's like things have to be perfect because really we don't see ourselves perfect. We don't, we see, we still see ourselves messed up. And so we sabotage relationships. We sabotage, um, the, the, the blessings that God wants to give us. We hold ourselves captive. We punish ourselves. And here I'm, I want to just tell you that your past does not qualify your future. It doesn't. Whatever happened in the past, it does not qualify your future. Only God does. What he says about you and who he says that you are, that is what qualifies who you are, what you should have. God and only him. You can't even qualify who you are and your future. And I know you may have experienced people not letting you off the hook for some things. Maybe there's some things they've hold, held you for. You, there are people who you don't talk to anymore because they have, they have separated themselves from you. But I'm here to let you know that that does, that, that does not um, define who you are. God says there's nothing that will separate you from my love, meaning out of all the things that you can do, I'll still always love you. And God is the creator of the universe. 
Yes, there are people who have been important in our lives that we may have let down, that we may have hurt. But the creator, God himself of the universe is saying, but I'm just going to still love you. That's something that we got to hold on to. And I know that what I'm saying right now is not something that we can snap our fingers and do overnight. But as I, as I'm encouraging you and as I'm about to give you some, just some scripture, we're going to take intentional steps day by day to let go of the anger and the resentment that we have toward ourself. Hebrews 10, 14 through 18 says, for by one sacrifice, he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. But he already made, he, he's already made you perfect forever while you are being made holy. Meaning I'm, we're not there yet, but even in the midst of us journeying, becoming more holy because of what Jesus did, he's already made us perfect. It's because of what he did, not what we're doing, but because of what he has done, he's made us perfect. Verse 15 says the Holy Spirit also testifies to us about this. First, he says, this is the covenant I will make with them. After that time, says the Lord, I will put my laws in their hearts and I will write them on their minds. Then he adds, their sins and lawless acts, I will remember no more. And where these have been forgiven, sacrifice for sin is no longer necessary. We've been forgiven. We don't need to sacrifice ourselves, punish ourselves, put ourselves on the altar day by day, reminding ourselves of what we've done, sabotaging, ending relationships, quitting jobs, trying to um, do things to be to look more perfect. We don't have to sacrifice ourselves like that. He says, I, I, I remember them no more. You're holding on to things that God said I forgot about. I have put it out of my mind. I have put it out of my mind, but yet you're still holding on. So I'm here to tell you, my sister, what God told me, forgive yourself. Give yourself the permission to receive what good God wants to put in your life. How can we move forward and receive what he wants to bless us with if we keep up with this feeling of unworthiness if we keep feeling we're not good enough I didn't do all the steps right what are people going to say because they knew back then or they know how I talk now like what are we we're 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 sabotaging we're taking the what the future that God has planned for us and we're, we're holding ourselves captive and keeping the the good that God has for us at a distance because we're like, no, we're, we're not, we're not worthy. We don't deserve. But here it, it was never about what you deserved. It was never, never about your worthiness. It was always about what Jesus did, what he sacrificed because what he knew we sin. He knows we're going to mess up. God knew that no one could keep the law. No one could be righteous on their own. So my sister, my friend, you are not the only one to mess up. You are not the only one to make those mistakes. You're not the only one to stay in relationships where you, you, you didn't realize you weren't loving yourself. You're not the only one to do and say the things that you have. You may feel alone. You may feel secluded like it's just you and I, I did this. And I, No, there are other people who have and they have forgiven themselves. They have learned how to let go. And yes, ma'am, it is a process, but it's an intentional decision, meaning there are times I'm, I'm going to feel that unworthiness, but there's still a choice in it. There's still a choice for me to speak to the part of me that doesn't feel worthy that doesn't feel worthy of a raise, that doesn't feel worthy of a promotion, that doesn't feel worthy of a good man, that doesn't feel worthy of a nice house, a nice car. So let me go and just rack up debt and credit. No, there's parts of you that's going to feel un unworthy, but I'm here to tell you that we got to make an intentional decision to let go and say, hey, no, 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 no. 
Jesus, what Jesus did, he died for that unworthiness. He died for the shame and guilt of what came with my sin. He died for it. I don't have to keep paying the price. I don't have to keep punishing myself for what I did. I don't have to keep staying in a place of I'm not this. No, yes, you are. God wants to move you into who you are becoming. And all and, and I love um, the verse that talks about how what what the enemy intended for evil or for harm, God intended it for good. Could not the thing, your past or whatever it is that you've gone through, cannot God use that for good? Will you let him use that for good in your future? The difference between what what was intended for harm or what happened for for bad or evil, the difference, the 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 space between that and God intending it for good is are you going to make the intentional decision to let him? Are you going to make the intentional decision to let go of what it of what it robbed you of? And to no longer let it rob you of your future. Are you going to make the decision? Because God's not going to force his his plan on you. He's not going to force his will on you. There's a decision that we have to make. To forgive ourselves for the mistakes we've made. To forgive ourselves for not loving ourselves properly. For not putting ourselves first. To forgive ourselves for the wrongs that maybe we've allowed others to make. Or the excuses we made. For how people treated us. We got to forgive ourselves and let go of what we didn't know. Some of you are on here. There are things that you just did not know. And you are operating out of ignorance. And I'm here to tell you it is okay. Let it go. Day by day. Let's make the decision together. And I want to give you a couple of practical things to help you. When, when letting this go, one of the things that I did, I literally would get up in the morning and look myself in the mirror, look myself in the eyes so that I was seeing myself talking to myself where I was at. And I would say, I forgive you, Shawanda. I forgive you. I love you. Yeah, they were, they were words, but I said it intentionally every single day. My soul needed to hear me letting myself go. So it's good to open your mouth, confess that you are going to forgive yourself, that you are letting yourself off the hook. Forgiveness is not just for other people. It's for yourself. So here's some practical things I want to give you as far as forgiving yourself. I want you to be honest with what happened. Don't cover it. Don't sugarcoat it. Like, let's come to the honest truth. This is what I did and I don't, I didn't like it. This is what happened to me and it hurt and I don't like it. And I'm right here. This is where I'm at. And that's the second thing. Be honest with where you are. Hey, I still think about it. I still hurt about it. I still cry about it. It still pains me. Be honest. And then the next couple of things, I'm going to read a scripture to you and so that I can better explain these next couple of practical things you can do in forgiving yourself and moving forward. So Philippians chapter three, verses 12 through 14, this is Paul speaking. And I want you to keep in mind that Paul, um, his, his initial, his original name was Saul, but he, and he was a Pharisee. So this was a religious leader who killed Christians, who killed believers and followers of Christ. He was persecuting the church. Jesus met him on the road to Damascus and asked him, why are you persecuting me? (laughs) You're persecuting my body because you're killing, you're killing believers. You're, You're killing the church. Right. So now Paul is this, he, he, he's, um, a follower of Jesus Christ. He's an apostle. He wrote a lot of the books in the New Testament. He wrote, a, these are letters to different churches now. So the same man, Saul, is now Paul, who used to kill Christians, is now speaking 
God's word, the word, that, the words that he's getting from Jesus to the church. Right. So here he's speaking to the church of Philippi, chapter three, verses 12 through 14. He says, not that I have already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. So here Paul is saying, listen, I haven't arrived. I haven't made it yet. But so I realize where I'm at and I can be honest with where I'm at. But what I do to get there is I press to what Jesus has, has called, called me to. I press toward. How do I do that? Well, one thing he's like, I, I'm, I, 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 I have to forget what is behind. I have to let go of what happened in the past. Because I can't look back there because if I do, I'll stay back there. I know that there's something that Jesus Christ has called me to. And in order for me to take hold of it, I have to keep pressing. Why pressing? Because, man, the, the, the not just life it, distractions or, or the hurts or pains. It's sometimes it's the thing in us that's pressing against us. It's our thoughts. It's that unworthiness. It's that shame. It's that gift. It's that it's those thoughts that come up and say, well, remember when you remember when you did this, remember who you were, what are they going to say? You talking to the same people who, who you, who you killed families, one women, children, so what are they going to think about? You know, all of that. He's like, I got to press. I got to push past that. I can be honest with my feelings. I can be honest with what happened. This is what I did. This is who I was. But it's about where I'm going. It's about the, the prize for which God has called me to. I'm, I'm following after him. In order for us to move forward, we have to be following after God, not after how we can feel better. Because we'll still be circling around. We'll still be holding on to the past. It'll still always be about, be about that hurt. But he said, no, it's about this prize now. It's about what God said now. That's how I move forward. And so I say, be honest with what happened. Be honest with where you are. You have not arrived here at this goal yet. And then press into what Jesus did. Press into what Jesus is saying about you. He's one, what he did. He sacrificed so that you could be free. He sacrificed so that you, you, so that you are made perfect and you don't have to strive to be perfect. And then who does he say you are? Man, he's calling you heavenward, upward, forward. You're a child of God. This is the, and the Holy Spirit that dwells in us. We're a dwelling place for the Holy Spirit. You're precious. Who is he calling you to be? What is the assignments that God is giving you? Where is he calling you to? You got to press into focusing on that and not on what you used to do and who you were. And who you used to hang around. No, I, I, I'm, I hang around this word now. This is who he's calling me to be. And then lastly, I say, be intentional to forget what is behind and focus on what is ahead. Focus on your future. Focus on who you are becoming from this. This morning, I was listening to a song that's called Fear is Not My Future. Fear is Not My Future but you are our future is not what, how we, how we handled things in the past. Our future is not the fear that we even hope we have right now. Our future is God. So that's what we're reaching toward. That is the prize is to be with God, to be closer to him, to be like Jesus. Your future is not fear. Your future is, 
is not unworthiness. Your future is not shame or guilt. Your future is freedom. Your future is now. Every decision you make today and and tomorrow and so on, that is your future. It's forward. It's toward Christ. And so let's just end right now with some confessions for our soul. And with these confessions, I have a song for you to listen to um, for this week until we um, meet again. Um, that song is called Let Go, Let Go by Dwayne Woods. Sometimes we say Let Go, Let God, but it's called Let Go by Dwayne Woods or whoever you want to listen to. I think there's different versions out there. Let Go. He says, Let Go and Let God. When I stop worrying, um, and I stopped looking back. That's when um, I let go and I let God let him have his way. And some of us, we may not know what it looks like to let go. We just know all the feelings <laughs> that we feel right now. But even in, a, in the feelings, like just allow yourself to feel what you feel. But then let God in it. So let go of trying to not feel it. Let go of trying to make excuses or reasonings on why you did what you did and or trying to push away the feeling let it let the feeling go let it flow and then let let God into it let him in it right there in the middle of it when you're feeling when the past is coming up whenever it's coming up go ahead and let let it run and in it say God my past is here again What do you have to say about my future? What do you have to say about me? Show me how to handle this. Show me how to address this because I don't want to look back anymore. I want to move forward. So repeat after me in these confessions for your soul. Let your soul hear yourself say this. I choose today to be intentional to let go of the resentment and anger toward myself. I have not arrived at my goal, but I choose to press toward it. I choose to forget the mistakes I've made for God chooses not to remember them. I choose to forgive myself and focus on the future and who God is creating me to be. Amen, amen, and amen. All right, I'll see y'all next Monday. And just remember, on Refreshing the Soul, soul care is self-care. Bye. All right, everyone, that wraps up this week's episode. Thank you for tuning in. Please subscribe, rate, and review this podcast so we can get refreshing to those souls who need it. Also, don't forget to head over to Amazon where you can purchase that 30-day devotional Rest for the Soul by yours truly. Um, You want to get it in your hand. And just remember, soul care is self-care. Until next time, bye-bye.